Welcome to the Lee Valley. Looking at this peaceful rural scene, it's hard to imagine that we're only 13 miles from the centre of London. But within this apparently tranquil landscape lies an important and vibrant industry. Because for well over a hundred years now, the Lee Valley has been famous for the production of all kinds of glasshouse crops. And today, the valley is busier and more successful than ever before. The Lee Valley is situated on the borders of Hertfordshire and Essex. And the first glass houses were built here at the end of the 19th century. The soil was good and water from underground sources was plentiful. What's more, Covent Garden Wholesale Market, serving the metropolis of London, was nearby. During and after the First World War, the government encouraged food production and the glasshouse area increased rapidly and became known as the Sea of Glass. After the Second World War, the area of glass exceeded 1,200 acres, making the valley by far the largest glasshouse area in the world. Since that time, with the rapid expansion of London, Many nurseries had given way to houses, schools, factories and roads. So much so that today the glasshouse area covers only about 350 acres. But this reduced area of glass now produces more than the 1,200 acres did in the 1950s. And the Lee Valley remains one of the largest glasshouse areas in the United Kingdom. The old timber glass houses have gone and have been replaced by light aluminium structures. Large sheets of glass are used to capture the maximum amount of sunlight. The environment of modern glass houses is increasingly controlled by computer, which measures the outside conditions of wind speed, wind direction, temperature and humidity. Inside, the computer measures air temperature, humidity, carbon dioxide levels, ventilation position and pipe temperature. It uses this information to create the ideal plant environment by manipulating the ventilators and the boilers and heating system. Consequently, modern glass houses are able to produce an abundance of produce throughout the year. does it all begin? Well, the growing process begins with propagation, and here we see lettuce being sown into peat blocks. The compost is fed into the blocking machine, which turns out peat cubes containing the seed. Lettuce seed is difficult to handle mechanically, so the seed is coated with a clay material to make a uniform pellet. The blocks are then placed on the glasshouse floor and covered with insulation to keep them cool, as lettuce will not germinate at temperatures greater than 23 degrees centigrade. When the seed has germinated, the covering is removed. The plants stay here until they reach full leaf cover at which point they are spaced out by machine onto trays. This computer controlled machine can space out plants at a rate of 5,000 per hour. Once spaced out on the trays, the young lettuces will continue to grow until they are ready for planting. Chrysanthemums, however, are started from cuttings, which are bought from specialist producers. These are first stuck into peat blocks, then placed on a heated floor, the temperature of which is maintained at a minimum of 23 degrees centigrade in order to start root development. The cuttings are covered with polythene to keep them moist. 
Then, seven days later, when the plants have rooted, this cover is removed. Thereafter, the plants are kept under a misting system which weans them until they are ready for planting. Aquatic plants are propagated quite differently. Water lilies, for example, are propagated by division. The eyes are removed from the parent plant and are floated on the surface of the water until the small roots begin to appear. The rooted eyes are then potted up and submerged in water. In bedding plant production, a variety of methods are used for sowing and germinating the seeds. Small batches are normally sown by hand into trays and covered with vermiculite. The trays are then placed on a heated floor to germinate. After the seed has germinated, some plants, such as begonias, require supplementary lighting to produce a strong seedling. For larger batches, cell trays are used. These trays pass through a machine to be filled with compost and thereafter through another machine which sows the seeds individually into each cell. trays are stacked onto a trolley which is then wrapped in cling film to retain moisture. The trolley is placed into a germination chamber which maintains the seeds at the optimum temperature. After germination has taken place the plants are placed in the glasshouse and grown on until ready for pricking out into trays or for potting up. Prior to pricking out the trays are filled with compost, which is usually prepared on the nursery, as different plant species require different nutrition. This machine fills the trays with the compost and waters them ready for the seedlings. The seedlings are either pricked out into the trays by hand or they're potted up on a machine. Plants, whether in trays or pots, are then placed in the glasshouse, either on benches or on the floor, and they remain there, growing on, until ready for sale. bedding plants, such as these geraniums for example, remain in these containers until they are sold. But for other crops, propagation is only the beginning. The next stage in the production process is planting. For example, in all year round chrysanthemum production, the first step is to prepare a growing medium. The old beds are cleared of the crop supports and the remains of the previous crop are pulverised. The soil is then cultivated with a digging machine and sterilised by steam to kill pests and diseases. Steam is injected for an hour under a plastic sheet to raise the temperature of the soil to 90 degrees centigrade.
plant bed is prepared using a specially designed raking and rolling machine. following which the crop supports are repositioned. The young plants are then placed on the surface of the soil. Finally, the irrigation controller is programmed to provide feed and water as the plants grow. In cucumber production, however, soil is no longer used. Instead, the growing medium is rock wool. This is made of molten rock which is spun at high speed to form a woven slab. Rock wool is used instead of soil because it's sterile and it also enables the grower to have more precise control of the plant nutrition. The glasshouse soil is completely covered with white plastic in order to control weeds and soil-borne pests and also to reflect light. The young cucumber plants, brought in from specialist propagators, are simply placed on the slabs and the drip irrigation is inserted. Lettuce, on the other hand, may be grown on soil or in water. If soil is the medium, it is first prepared. The planting machine is loaded, after which the plants are placed in shallow indentations made by the machine. After planting, the lettuce are watered in using the automatic overhead irrigation system. In a water system, the soil has been replaced by concrete channels covered with plastic. The growing medium here, of course, is water, to which all the essential ingredients have been added. This is continuously recirculated, while its nutritional status is monitored by computer. The plants are placed by machine into the flowing water.